you for joining us for this session. Um, um, I, uh, I'll start by just saying the subject uh, is one of uh, uh, a great interest to me, culture and, um, and the impact of, of culture uh, in bridging uh, a range of different things in, in uh, society. Um, the um, artistic and cultural aspects are a little bit like sport. They cross all, and it's like you can have the Olympics of culture. Uh, and it brings people together under a common umbrella. Uh, and it uh, moves away from, from all of the challenges that we experience in our own independent cultures. And so I think it can play a role in, um, as I said, bridging the cultural divide between all of the different nations, whether it be um, uh, Islamic, or religious, or, or, or um, uh, inherently cultural. And, um, and then it, uh, um, I think it starts with creating awareness. People start to learn about others' cultures. And I'm finding it fascinating. I have a young boy and um, recently said to me, you know, when do you want to come and visit me in London? And he said, well, Dad, actually, I'd rather go to Japan. And I was like, why would you want to go to Japan? He says, well, you know, I'm, I, I play a lot of these games on the internet, and most of my friends are Japanese. And it was absolutely astonishing. I took him to Japan, and uh, we went there um, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And um, you know, we started meeting Japanese people. Well, he already knew how to write Japanese from a computer program that he had learned how to do, and he knew how to uh, communicate with them on a, on a number of very interesting friends. There's something called Magu, and it's a Japanese comic strip. And everybody we'd run into, you know, they'd go, oh, you know Magu? And, and it was just an immediate bond um, with someone from a completely different culture. I think that is a remarkable opportunity that exists. And it wasn't possible to do it to the extent that we can do it today with the internet and, uh, and the linkages and the openness and the global connectivity. And I think the youth are going to be the ones that will foster this. And, and what will come out of those bridges will be new friendships, like the example of my sons. But beyond that, you know, that will be the beginning of new forms of cooperation, and uh, which leads then to many things, including economic development and prosperity, new business opportunities, new, new, new things to work on together. Um, I think the Arab nation is particularly uh, uniquely positioned uh, to foster uh, extended and expanded uh, cultural development, uh, in part just because of the, you know, the Sharia law within Islam for the zakat, and uh, the idea that people have to and are responsible to commit a portion of their wealth to um, charity and to social good. And so this can play uh, uh, a very instrumental role in how does um, uh, the cultural exchanges and, and cultural development uh, get funded and get uh, prolifer proliferated. Um, so I'm uh, very pleased to, uh, to, to be on this panel and with you today and, and uh, have with me, of course, some uh, uh, very uh, noteworthy uh, individuals that uh, I'm hoping will uh, share with you some of their thoughts on this subject. I think what I'll do is just go uh, uh, clockwise, if I or counterclockwise, if I can, and start with you, uh, uh, Mr. Al Matua. Matua. Thank you. Um, so just just by way of introduction, my name is Naif Matua. I created something called the Ninety Nine. It's a comic book series I launched out of Kuwait. Uh, theme park launched right after that, and the TV series is now on global television. Just taking stories that we created based on our culture and values, but accessible to the world. And I, I want to just start off my thoughts with talking about an example of how arts and culture helped change culture in the United States. So up until the 1970s, uh, there wasn't really much of African Americans on TV representing kind of positive cultural roles. And Sesame Street took the gamble. They introduced an a African American couple onto the street. The reply came swift from Mississippi. They banned the show. And it took the New York Times to name and shame them for them to reverse that decision. Cut to the Cosby Show in the 1980s, still the third lo longest running serial in history. The Cosby Show did something quite interesting because for the first time in TV history in the United States, the, it was an African-American family where the father wasn't a janitor or a driver or, or, or a cook. He was actually a doctor. Mom was a lawyer, not a maid or a nanny. 
and they had a kid in college. And they, they changed not only how white America saw black America, it changed how black America saw itself in a very neutral way. There was no talk about race. They had two good black presidents, strong, ethical, fit, great leaders. And the next year, Barack Obama comes to power. Now, did 24...